We're a very warm welcome to you, and we're going to start with this story. In the digital economy, developers and data specialists are in high demand. I think that's a fair comment. However, South Africa is experiencing a dire digital skill shortage, and this needs to be addressed urgently, says the digital agency Hello Computer, as well as Umuzi. It's an organization that supports talented young people in developing skills in order to access high-value careers. So... What are they doing about it? Challenging other digital agencies to help them fund 100 programming learnerships by August next year. Joey Kavutlu is with us. He's the MD at Hello Computer Johannesburg. Andrew Levy is the owner and co-founder of Umuzi. To both of you, a very warm welcome. Joey, let me start with you. How dire is this shortage that you point out? It's quite dire. I mean, in our space, um, the work that we're doing requires a lot of data and programmers. Um, And I know that within our business, we've had situations where we've been looking for developers and programmers and literally waiting for months to get uh, the right people within the door. Uh, And that obviously has a consequence on the output that you're that you're trying to achieve. Yeah, correct. Mm. Correct. And for me, it's it's a bit baffling in the sense that we've got this shortage of programmers and uh, people in the data space. But at the same time, we are exporting a lot of this work to countries such as India and so forth. And with the high unemployment rate that we currently have right now, it seems a little bit bizarre that we're not training our own people Mm. to to be able to do these things. Bizarre. I mean, it's a no brainer. But Mm. Andrew, how do we find ourselves in this position? Where's the deficit? I think uh, it comes to this idea of not really believing in our young talent. Um, We've got 6.6 million unemployed youth in South Africa. And when you think youth, you think of one homogenous group. No talent, no hope, probably black, probably from a township or rural area. English is poor and going nowhere in life. And that's quite clearly not true. We have a huge amount of barriers in South Africa, legacy issues that have been created by systems that we're just not accessing or letting these young people access high value jobs. So the talent is there. We just need to learn how to get that talent into these positions. And Joe, this is not just confined to the brand communications industry. I would imagine this cuts across all sectors. It's across the board. So the banking industry, consultancies, the health sector, Mm. um, data and programming is quite important. So it's not a problem just for the advertising space, but it's a problem for us um, in our economy as a whole. We're in a space right now where, where, where technology is going to be what moves economies forward. So the work that we should be doing is ensuring that our young people are prepared for the job market of the future. And how do we do that? We do that by allowing them to access this space. The other thing about programming and data for me, which is quite important, is that it's a low barrier to entry. And what I mean by that is that two out of three developers are self-taught, which means that once you give people access to this space, from then on, they can chart their own path in terms of growing. So they may start in the advertising space, but their opportunities are are endless in, in, in where they could go. So for me, beyond just solving the problem for the advertising space, I believe that it's, it's, it's a challenge that we should take on because it solves an economic problem of preparing young people mm. for the market of the future. And is it just programmers or is, is, it, is it broader than that? So Muzi is much broader than that. We really believe that the future of work incorporates both creativity, so that's where we came from, strategy, and then this tech space. And so we're training young people in all of these spaces in a very inclusive on the job kind of manner. Because that's the other thing. I think Mm. the way in which we teach our young people is outdated. Mm. So we really work with managers. We don't have educators or facilitators. We work on the job. We have products Mm. that we actually believe in. And at the end of the year, we support these young people to get into high value jobs. What specific aptitude do you need? Well, this is a good question. We have these traditional signalers like maths and passing matric. And the truth of the matter is we've recruited or had 10,000 young people apply to our programs of various aptitudes, from having tertiary, some level of tertiary, to just passing matric. And none of that actually matters at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's about, can you do it? Do you want to do it? And are you willing to learn? You know, we train in in, in specific skills in UX and UI design in multimedia because we believe that's the storytelling medium. And then, of course, in coding and front end and back end. And then this new space, which is really the Wild West. No one really knows what data is. But we're trying to get a handle on how to train up junior data analysts and engineers so that we can learn how to work with data so as to make real solutions that actually affect humans at the end of the day. Yeah, we don't know what data is until we run out of data. (laughs) And then there's this mass panic that goes everywhere. I'm going to talk about the the challenge in just a moment. But, uh, Joey, what happens if we don't correct the situation? in in terms of our economy going forward. It would have a direct implication at some point on GDP. It would. We we can no longer depend on basic commodities um, to prop up our our economy. 
It just can't happen. Um, we're importing too many things. The new businesses that are changing the world, the new businesses that right now, the biggest businesses are all the tech businesses. It's your Ubers, it's your Googles um, and the like. So at some point in time, we need to start developing those kind of businesses ourselves. And to do that, we need this kind of skill. And for me, the importance of where this meets creativity is a sense that for the longest time, the creative process has happened over here in isolation, where stuff like um, um, the development and programming has been on the periphery. We're in a space right now where these, these, these skill sets are part and parcel of the creative process because it's the problems that you're solving. And to your earlier question of like what kind of, what, what kind of aptitude do people need to have to be within the space, it's that aptitude of being able to problem solve. So if we don't get this right, the impact on the economy is going to be quite, quite great. Mm -hmm. We're going to be forever dependent on commodities, um, and that's going to be quite a challenge for us. So the two of you were obviously sitting about um, doing nothing. And, uh, you were, <laughs> as we do. As, 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 as we does, do, yeah. yes. And this idea of the challenge came up. Yeah. How, was that, how was that seeded? So I think that um, Joey is a passionate South African and wants to make change. And so you're giving all the credit to him? I want to give <laughs> yeah, most of it, it, yeah, most yeah. Of it to, to Joey. <laughs> no, but I think it is a partnership, and I think this is the important yeah. thing, Joey. We can't do it in isolation. We need corporate mm. citizens, active corporate citizens, to get involved in this challenge as well. And I think, you know, we had a chat and we've had chats over the, the last couple of mm. years about what we can do. And this challenge became obvious to us is to say we're training the junior talent to provide pipelines for, te for yeah. companies effectively, not only in creativity, but in tech, in mm. banking, in telcos. And we thought, well, why don't we put this mm. challenge out? So how does the challenge work? Basically, we want to get uh, 100 programmers funded between now and, uh, what is it, July of next year? Yeah. Um, and essentially, all we're looking for is for, first and foremost, I would like to challenge my fellow digital agencies, my fellow agencies within the space. For me, it's a direct challenge to say that we have to be part of the solution. Um, and the challenge is directed to them to say, let us together fund 100 learnerships between now and then. Um, that's where, in that way, we are being part of the, the, the solution. But beyond just, just uh, for our industry, we welcome in any other industry to come into this challenge. Again, let's absolutely stress that it's not just confined to the advertising no. and marketing no. industry. Yeah. In fact, probably not. Yeah. It's much broader. <laughs> it's much broader. Yeah. Than that. So what's it going to cost the companies? 125,000 rands per learnership for a nine-month learnership. And that's essentially, in real terms, it's a drop in the ocean, yeah. isn't it? It is a drop in the ocean yeah. if you think about the value that these young people will provide to themselves. As developers, they're earning over a lifetime 23 million rand. Mm -hmm. And society-wise, they're contributing about 6 million rand towards tax. Mm -hmm. Now, that 125,000 that Joey was talking about, it also includes a stipend. Of course, we want to lower the barriers yeah. to learning. So one of those barriers is, of course, transport to get into work mm -hmm. every single day because we're in the middle of town. Mm -hmm. To get into work, it costs money. So we're trying to lower the barriers by providing stipends. And for me, that, that was one of the most important parts of the partnership with the Muzi was the fact that there are a lot of um, organizations that are doing some version of this data training. But what was, what was important for me was that Umuzi's program deals with the socioeconomic challenges that people face, you know, making it possible for people to go through this learnership without having to stress about food, about the fact that they don't have anywhere to stay, which is why the Muzi learnership for us was quite important. Don't different companies need different skills, though? And what I'm sensing from this is it's a, it's a very homogenous approach that you're, that you're taking. So I think completely non-homogenous. Um, <laughs> I think that companies do need uh, different skills, but I think what they, what they need is conceptual skills and understanding of how to work in teams. So this collaborative mm. idea is very important. Mm. How many times have you heard of companies having these huge grad programs because all these grads coming out of first year universities don't know how to work, right? Well, at Amuzi, we're mm. all on the job. So the point is we're getting our people ready to hit the ground running and they'll be able to hit the ground running in these different spaces. You've mm. sparked the interest of millions of people. Let's now. hope, let's uh, hope. Let's <laughs> hope. <laughs> and it's really, it's an important initiative. There's a website, I presume. Umuzi's yeah, so you can go to umuzi.org and yeah. find out all the details there or you can email us at 100programmers at umuzi.org and I'm sure it's on the, the scroller right now. Um, but yeah, <laughs> www.umuzi.org and yeah, you can find out more you, details. You know the television business too well, guys. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Joe Kavutlu of Hello Computer Johannesburg, Andrew Levy of Umuzi, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you so thank much. You. Coming up on the program.